What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, interesting comparison has been leaked between and involving the biggest fight in the sport of boxing between undefeated three-division world champion, former junior welterweight undisputed world champion, currently the reigning WBO, World Boxing Organization welterweight world champion, who was widely considered by many to be the number one best pound for pound fighter in the world, in Terrence Bud Crawford. Terrence Crawford is 39 wins, no losses, no draws, uh, 30 big wins by way of knockout, 35 years of age, 5 foot 8 with a 74 inch arm reach. Uh, he's drawing comparisons to that of retired, legendary, iconic, Hall of Fame superstar boxer. Olympic gold medalist, two-division world champion, Andre S.O.G. Ward. Andre Ward retired now back in June of 2017, the last time we saw him in the ring. He retired with a record of 32 wins, no losses, no draws, 16 wins by way of knockout. He stood at six feet tall with a 71-inch armage. Andre Ward, he competed in the super middleweight division and the light heavyweight division, okay? He won the Super 6 tournament. He's Olympic gold medalist. Uh... And he's a two-division world champion, Hall of Famer, superstar. And um, Terrence Crawford is on the verge of fighting the biggest fight in boxing, the biggest fight of his career, a massive legacy fight, a possible welterweight undisputed showdown between himself and undefeated, unified, three-belt WBA, WBC, IBF, welterweight world champion, superstar boxer, who is widely considered by many to be number top two, if not number one, definitely top five pound for pound best fighters in the world in Earl DeTrue Spence Jr. Earl Spence Jr. is 32 wins, uh, excuse me, 28 wins, no losses, no draws, uh, 22 big wins by way of knockout. He is 32 years of age, five foot nine and a half with a 72 inch arm reach, and he's a southpaw. Terrence Crawford is a switch fighter. Uh, he switched from orthodox to southpaw, but these days he's predominantly a southpaw, okay? And, um, Another multi-division world champion, British superstar boxer, who fought uh, uh, against Terence Crawford and trained and is very familiar with Andre Ward in Amir King Kong. Okay, Amir Khan is a superstar in the British boxing, retired now, 34 wins, 6 losses, no draw, 21 wins by way of knockout, 5 times in his career he's knocked out, 36 years of age, 5 foot 8 and a half with a 71 inch armage, okay? Uh, Amir Khan, he fought Terrence Crawford back in April of 2019, uh, to which he was uh, um, uh, knocked out in the sixth round. Well, you know, he essentially quit in the sixth round, uh, but he ended up training with Terrence Crawford. He fought Terrence Crawford. He trains with Terrence Crawford. Uh, and he also trained with Andre Ward and Virgil Hunter. OK, Virgil Hunter is the longtime trainer and make mentor to Andre S.O.G. Ward. And Amir Khan, he also trained with um, Virgil Hunter. Right. And um, uh, uh, Mayor Khan, uh, he discussed this possible mega showdown between Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford, who he thinks he's going to win and why he thinks they're going to win. And interestingly enough, he stated the reason that he's picking Terrence Crawford is not because he fought and lost to Terrence Crawford and um, because he trained with Terrence Crawford and Bomack, Brian, Mo Brian McIntyre actually trained him for his last fight with Special K, Kel Brook, his British biggest rival to which he lost, he was knocked out in that fight. Um, he stated that it's the comparisons, okay, that he sees from Terrence Crawford, and he'd been in the ring with Terrence Crawford, to sparring and being around Andre S.O.G. Ward. And he stated it's his timing. He said that he believes Terrence Crawford is gonna win a unanimous decision against Errol Spence Jr. because of his timing, because his attention to detail uh, he makes you miss by just the slightest of inches. Now, he stated that uh, uh, Terrence Crawford does get hit, obviously. He stated, but I have very fast hands. I have long, long arms. And, um, you know, uh, he was making me miss by inches. Uh, he would just take a half a step back. He just knows every inch of the squared circle, okay? And so he says that he just took a half a step back just to make me miss just enough. And if you know Amir Khan, he was never outboxing in his career outside of that fight with Terrence Crawford, okay? And you could see his frustration, and essentially he quit. It was supposed to be a punch to the thigh, but, you know, uh, you could see that he knew he was going to be... He got dropped in the fight. He knew it was, a, it was a matter of time before he got knocked out. 
and uh, Andre Ward, great timing, okay? Uh, Andre Ward's not the quickest athlete, okay? Not the most um, twitchy athlete, not the most explosive athlete. But what he is is very fundamentally sound, pays a lot of attention to detail, very high ring IQ, okay? Um, and Andre Ward used that to his advantage, okay? He put you in positions where he can be successful. And uh, it's funny because two-time retired, retired two-time welterweight world champion, superstar boxer, Showtime Sean Porter, who in my opinion is a future Hall of Famer, he stated something that was very telling too. Uh, he actually fought Terrence Crawford and he fought Errol Spence. Now he lost to both. Um, and Sean Porter stated that it's interesting because Errol Spence wants to beat you at his game, at your game, excuse me. And Terrence Crawford drags you and beats you into his game, right? So he says that Terrence Crawford is going to make you fight his fight where Errol Spence wants to beat you at your fight, which is impressive, right? Both is impressive. It's impressive that Errol Spence can beat you at your game. That shows his versatility uh, and his ability to make adjustments if he's fighting your fight and going to beat you at your fight, okay? Uh, that's equivalent to saying I'm going to go play in the NBA and I'm going to out three-point shoot Steph Curry, okay? Uh, you know, um, and so um, that's, that's very impressive. Um, and then on the flip side, you know, uh, he stated that, you know, Terrence Crawford is going to make you fight his fight and going to beat you at his fight, right? Which is also very impressive because that's what Floyd Mayweather does, okay? Floyd Mayweather makes you fight his fight. He, it don't matter what fight, what kind of fighter you are. It don't matter how fast you are. It don't matter what you bring to the table. He's going to slow down the pace of the fight and he's going to make you fight his fight. So Sean Porter said that Terrence Crawford drags you into his world and then he beats you in his world, okay? Errol Spence likes to beat you in his world. Now, I always say this, right? Um, the high work rate, the fundamentals, the size of Errol Spence, I believe is going to give Terrence Crawford trouble. I think the timing, the counterpunch ability, the extremely long arms, the angles that Terrence Crawford uses is going to give Errol Spence trouble. And I believe the man who leaves his ego at home on the dresser is going to be the victor in this fight. If Terrence Crawford looks to be a dog and absolutely fight in exchange with Errol Spence, then I believe he'll lose. If he chooses to box like he did with Victor Postal and against Jose Benavidez Jr., then I think he'll win. If Errol Spence wants to fight Terrence Crawford fight and looks to outbox Terrence Crawford, then he's going to lose. If Errol Spence fights the fight he fought against your Danis Ugas and forces Terrence Crawford to fight that pace of a fight, then he will win, right? But I ultimately believe the man who fights and leaves his ego at home on the dresser and picks it up when they come back home is going to win this fight, okay? And so with that said, um, this is a true 50-50 fight. Hence the reason to me it's the biggest fight in boxing. It seems like a lot of the suits are trying to downplay the magnitude of this fight. This is a huge fight in my opinion. With that said, um, the timing that Amir Khan is talking about is very important because if you watch Errol Spence in the no man lands in that, that middle, uh, that area when he's trying to work his way in and he's, and he's working his way back out, uh, he gets caught a lot in that no man's land area, as I call it. Okay. Uh, he's not too far in, he's not too far out and he's not exactly in mid range, right? Uh, it's like the no man's land area. But Terrence Crawford has extremely long arms and uses uh, some very, very weird, unorthodox angles. Uh, and it's the punch that you don't see is the one that hurts you the most, okay? And uh, Terrence Crawford is a great, I believe he's a better counterpuncher. Errol Spence is a better initiator. Terrence Crawford is a better counterpuncher. What that means is that Errol Spence initiates the fight. He presses the fight. He presses the pace of the fight. And he's great at doing that, okay? And once he gets in your wheelhouse and gets on the inside and he gets in your house and he gets in your backyard, he's a tornado. OK, you have to prevent him from getting in there. And uh, who better than to prevent him from getting in there? A, a counter puncher where Errol Spence has worked his way on the inside. He gets hit a lot. If you look at a Sean Porter fight, Kel Brook fight and even your Dana Sugis fight in that no man's land area, he gets hit in that no man's land area. And that's Terrence Crawford's specialty. That's his strength. That's his wheelhouse. Uh, so again, like I said, the, who makes the better adjustments is going to be interesting to see, um, and the angles, right. And Terrence Crawford, uh, is predominantly a Southpaw. Now it's going to be interesting to see if Terrence Crawford stays orthodox because that gives him an advantage. Okay. 
Uh, southpaws don't like to fight southpaws, and he'll take away their southpaw advantage. They both being southpaws, okay? Then it's definitely going to come down to timing. And uh, uh, I think Terrence Crawford has slightly better timing and counterpunchability, and Errol Spence is a better initiator, okay? He presses the fight. Terrence Crawford is a historically slow starter. He can't start slow against Errol Spence Jr. So I understand what Amir Khan is coming from when he says about the counterpunchability, the timing. It's like it's a lot similar to Andre Ward, and, and that's exactly what it is. I never put those two together because Andre Ward fights at such a bigger weight class. I never thought about it, but when I think about it, yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of great comparison to Andre Ward and Terrence Crawford. I think Andre Ward was more slicker and defensively responsible than Terrence Crawford was uh, or is. Um, but yeah, I can see the comparisons. So hopefully this fight comes to fruition. Errol Spence announced that he'll be back in April. It's ironic because uh, there's another big fight looking to take place April 15th. Uh, and there's reports that it could take place April 15th. And that's Javante Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia. So maybe they know something we don't. Maybe that fight is not going to happen. Maybe Errol Spence changes his date. But two massive pay-per-views in one month for the PBC, Premier Boxing Champions, founded in advisor of Al Heyman and Showtime. I'm hard-pressed to see that. So let's see how this unfolds and plays out. But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue. Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. You haven't subscribed. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon and get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All in one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to Black Media Raw. Make sure you like your shitty videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.